You wouldn't believe, but this is a very common rust spot at G models. And it's so awkward and avoidable. Responsible for the calamities is this stupid tube that connects filler neck and container of the wash wiper system, creating a space which is perfect for dirt to accumulate. But one by one from the start. The car is an 86 Carrera in Preussisch Blau, Prussian Blue. Definitely one of my top 5 911 colors. She has an excellent engine and a tone in tone blue interior with pinstriped seats. I've recently changed the oil tank and a rear light and replaced the anti roll bar mounts. There are only few things left to do before she's going to be a very decent 3.2. The chassis and the fender had massively been infested by rust and if it had remained unnoticed it could have become a threat for structural integrity. Today given current 911 prices that justify all kinds of expensive repairs it's no question to fix this but 20 years back when this was a normal used car making normal headaches to her owner it might have taken the beauty out. If it's black, it's coming back, that's what they say. Wire wheeling left it still very black, so I thought I could sandblast it to remove the ferric oxides. The hand tool didn't prove to be efficient. So I tried the detachable blasting unit of my cabin, but all it did was turning air into a dirty workshop. I hoped there'd be just a layer of rust and beneath solid metal would appear. However, if rust progresses, it attacks the entire panel and it becomes one porous mass with dark stains at both sides of it. Yes, I know, I know. At this point it was obvious that the panel had been gone, lost irretrievably, beyond repair. But I wanted to leave no stone unturned and so I tried filling the holes with silver solder, which has helped me saving panels in the past. It turned out to kind of work, yes. But this is not any mere panel anywhere in the car. It's a spot where high loads are introduced into the structure. Sleeping it over made it clear to me that this is not the right spot for compromises.
It is astonishing how well these Light G models were protected against rust. All panels galvanized and covered by some beige gray paint, which I often find entirely fresh and unharmed, like here inside the suspension turret. The wheels had been off the ground during the entire repair too, as much as possible avoid that I weld the new panel into a deformed chassis. The bending moment, of course, still has to be supported by the structure, but at least it distributes over the entire side wall. Yes, I can hear you thinking. Do we have reason to be happy with the fit of this repair panel? Like Emmett Brown said to Marty McFly, you have to think four-dimensional. It's going to fit in a couple of minutes when it's tacked in.
every single hammer beat is well invested at this stage, I guess. If panels are leveled out properly, all coming steps are so much easier and straightforward. Regarding the size of this repair panel, I've tried to find a compromise between removing all relevant rust, but also not ripping the entire car to pieces. That means that some slightly rusty panels I've accepted to remain. Welding to an even slightly rusted panel is a huge challenge, as you can see watching my shaky efforts to weld this gap. So what can be done? Manufacturing the repair panel with even tighter gaps isn't the way to go, because at some point it needs space to do some heat expansion. The moment when the arc ignites is very delicate and so the gun pushes welding wire into the gap. The edges may just burn off and the wire doesn't find anything to connect to. Adding some additional material before the melting even starts, that is a good way to avoid the pitfall. Some take an extra welding wire for this purpose, some a coat hanger. I took a pigtail from the guillotine. Welding up panels with a gap as tight as this one here is an easy thing to do. About as easy as scoring against Germany. I didn't even limit myself to spots but welded short beats. No problem if the whole thing is cooled with air from time to time. Painting things in a mechanics workshop is very much benefiting from a low-pressure paint gun, like my Anastivata, because it creates little overspray and doesn't stir up too much dust. 
The pink primer offers highest contrast to the surface below and helps me judging the required thickness. By cleaning off the remnants of Porsche's body sealing tape, some of the stone guard was removed too. In order to bridge the hard edge created by the wire wheel, I apply a little body sealant and then cover it with new stone guard. I never apply these products directly on the panels, because neither is the strength of their adhesion very high, nor do they keep oxygen away reliably. So whatever goes on the panel, the first layer will always be epoxy primer. Next, the actual base coat goes on, Preussisch Blau Metallic. And though I actually do have a supply of acrylic paint, in this case only water-based paint was available. The wet water paint looks a bit like Neymar's new earring, but no worries, it dries down to a flat surface, and while that happens, the shade of the color changes. At the transition area between old and new paint, some blend paint shop needs to be done and that requires either a soft edge tape, the white foam one, or normal tape folded. And that is when finally the clear coat can go on. I make sure that every new coat covers the previous coat entirely plus some add-on and that eventually should give a durable coating of the repair. <laughs> 